Ain't No Grave, issue number four. That's right, folks. It's the penultimate issue of Ain't No Grave. I think it's safe to say we are about, you know, just over halfway through the year. This is my favorite comic book I've read this year. Incredible. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I'm having an absolute blast with this one. And this issue was very intense. Very scary. I kind of liked it. So, you know, each issue's been about, like, the stages of grief. And this one is depression. And this whole issue is done without any dialogue. So it's going to be a lot more of like me explaining what we're seeing in a picture, which doesn't that make for good audio video content? A guy telling you what you could look at yourself. <laughs> it's awesome. Like, oh, it's so gorgeous. This is so incredible. Is this my favorite of Jorge Corona's artwork? It might be. I think it's just incredible. It looks so good. And maybe that has a lot to do with um, Jean-Francois Belou's artwork or Bolo, Bo Bolio. I'm not sure how you pronounce their uh, last name, but it's incredible. Like the colors are just phenomenal. So this issue is all about Ryder trying to find death itself. She's been looking for the embodiment of death. Someone she can cheat out of all of um, her pain. Is she going to find them? Hard to say. She's walking through like an abandoned town. She enters into one that looks too familiar to her. It looks like a tavern she's been to before she sets herself up, pours herself a drink, gets ready to pour another. And it looks a lot like a place she was when she was younger. And like another stage of her life when she was sad and broken, thinking she could escape it all. And she never could. So we intercut like the old modern version of Ridge freaking out with the young one freaking out and just seeing like, I got to stop drinking myself into depression and just throws a tantrum in the room. We intercut that with like both versions just ruining their life somehow. And that is when like the figure of a child is standing in the doorway in both interpretations. Now this could be a looming feature of like death is always watching her, the innocent child who was lost I, I mean, you could read it that way. I'm not really sure how the book wants you to interpret it. I think it's kind of like a lost part of her. Something of her innocence that's lost. So the child's in the doorway. She starts to chase it out. And as she's running, she like trips on like a twig. And she gets like caught in the dirt just to make things worse for herself. She then hears like a note of music being played in like the highest point of like a tall tower. The music starts to... She's get louder and louder, so she's crawling through like the catacombs and just decrepit ruins of this tower till she gets there and she finds like a guy who's he's ginormous, he's got like an old hat. I don't know what type of like caricature this is supposed to be because we have like you know a, a trapper and a hunter appear later on in the book and we have a scarecrow. This is just like a, a gentleman musician whose fingers are bloodied playing his guitar all day, and this young woman is there with him. And she is just, like, freaked out by this. The guitar starts crying. The girl starts crying. And suddenly, like, a storm hits and destroys the tower. So they're all falling. Everyone's crying and freaking out. He breaks his guitar. And then Ridge is still trying to, like, protect this young girl. But this creature, this death, it's just a metaphor for death always going to, like, take what it never wanted or just take things from you before you could have them. And as this guy takes this little girl, we see that Ryder is buried into the rubble. And she's just lost this girl forever, lost her innocence, lost her daughter, per se. This isn't her daughter that we're seeing, but it's just a metaphor. Like, she's losing her daughter. She's losing everything she wanted that she never had. Cut back to the past where we see another version of Ridge cleaning herself up. And it's like, okay, I thought I could escape my sorrow. I can't. I'm cutting my hair again. And I'm setting out on a mission to save myself and potentially my family. And then she starts crawling through the darkness. We see like she's entombed in a coffin, but she's pushing her way through like the roots of a tree that is growing out there. And that's in her cut with like her leaving her family to go on this mission to be with her family. Amazing. Are you kidding me? It's awesome. She breaks through her own coffin, emerges from the dirt, and we see like a scarecrow husk of a man. I guess he was like the grave digger pointing to the sun like you have to go that way. She's in like an endless graveyard and the caretaker's like, all right, head on your way. She grabs her hat and she heads off and oh, it's so cool. It is so cool looking. I love it so much. So unique. She's following the sun. She runs into 
the frontiersman or like the trapper hunter guy who's got you know like the the raccoon hat and the big furs all over him and she gives him like the ace of clubs that she had when she was on the boat he suddenly turns into like a big dust storm spins around in a circle and this is where the book ends folks for our first piece of dialogue in the whole issue finally we have met the pale rider or whatever you want to call him death has emerged he's got a great look it's so flowing with long capes there's just something very like classic about it i know we're in like the desert it just reminds me of just something that you'd see out of like a like a like an italian western or like a spanish western or something it's like the long red hair the big capes like the scrolls and parchments all over him it's crazy and he's got a scythe and all right after the mission of fighting our own depression and sorrow we have made it to death next issue is going to be all about acceptance are we going to accept our fate that we're dying or are we going to push forward or what's that going to look like Ryder is a character who seems like she's going to try to kill death but we'll see what happens a beautiful way to end this book oh, it's, this has been incredible i've loved every issue of this book it is so gorgeous it is so clean it is doing something wholly original and so specific to comic books. I truly dig it. A masterclass in how you tell a story in this format. Utterly beautiful. If you aren't reading it or you aren't looking at it, please do so. It is truly spectacular. So, Ain't No Grave, issue number four. I am going to give a nine out of ten. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.